doing a radiator swap. When your car is overheating, there's a lot of things that you can do, but it's actually fairly cheap and easy to swap a radiator from a standard radiator to what's called a two row or three row radiator. Now, the stock radiator that I'm taking out of this vehicle, you can see is quite a bit thinner than the one that I'm going to put back in. That's because the new one is what's called a two row versus a one row radiator. What that basically means is that instead of one row of the heat exchanger material, there's two rows of heat exchanger. And so there's more capacity for water, more metal, and more surface area. It's that surface area that is probably the most important thing because what you're doing is increasing the amount of metal that there is for the air to touch as the fan pulls the air through. This is going to drastically reduce the temperature of your, uh, of your car, assuming that you are having troubles with overheating. If your car is running fine, there's no reason to do this upgrade. However, if you have a leak in your radiator or any other kind of radiator problems and you're going to have to do a swap anyway, I recommend going to a two row. There's talk about whether two rows or three rows are better. Three rows are in fact more surface area, but a lot of the holes are smaller, so they're more prone to failure. Whereas with the two row, the holes are basically the same size as the one, so the water still percolates through just as well. Uh, this is an aluminum and plastic. There are some that are all aluminum, which would be slightly better. Um, for the most part, the plastic parts can actually be better if you're not having heat issues because the plastic parts don't wear or slowly start to oxidize. If you had a pure aluminum, that would be great, but most of them are aluminum copper or aluminum steel and you can get rust on them. An aluminum plastic one isn't going to ever develop rust and is going to be a pretty long life, low maintenance part. The the process of doing the install is actually pretty easy because there are four spots that you remove hose clamps from, pop the old radiator off along with the clamp that holds it in place, put the new one back in, and put the clamps back on place. That's all there is to it. Uh, this particular part was, I believe, $85 on Amazon. They range from $69 to $150 for most of the aftermarkets. Um, and if you decide to go with an original equipment, it should run about $300. The labor is something you can totally do yourself. It will take you about two hours and for most cars. There are some cars that are pretty hard to do. I wouldn't recommend this if you were trying to do, say, my Mini Cooper, just because there's so much in the way and you've got to remove so much of the body. With the V-Cross, I chose to remove the front grille but it wasn't a requirement, it just makes it so it's a lot easier to get in and out and reach through and around things. But I could have done it without removing any of the body panels.